Hello, in this video I am going to be telling you what I think is the combined 11 between Celtic and Rangers players for the 2022 slash 2023 season. I have my whiteboard here, I have a green pen and I have a blue pen. Will I even need the blue pen? Well, let's find out. Right, so where are we going to put this? Where should we position the board? Should I just have it like behind me here and I can sort of talk you through it as we go? I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start off in goal and I don't think we can look anywhere else. Let's do it this way around. Let's go portrait. Um, we've got to start with Joe Hart in goal. Joe Hart has the most amounts of clean sheets within the Scottish Premiership this season with six. There's no one that comes close, really. I mean, there's a few on five. Um, Trevor Carson, Liam Kelly and David Marshall with St Mirren. But um, yeah, his percentage of clean sheets is 40% of his games. So yeah, he's by far the best goalkeeper in my eyes in the old firm teams. Um, Rangers have had a lot of issues with goalkeepers. I don't think I need to stay on this point for too long um, as Joe Hart has consistently been the Celtic number one this season. Rangers have chopped and changed between McLaughlin and McGregor and Joe Hart has more clean sheets. Moving on to the defence and yes we are going to need a blue pen because we are going to go right back first and we're going to go for James Tavernier. Tav has an amazing goal scoring record this season despite not being amazing defensively, especially in Europe. I think it's been all right sort of more in uh, in domestic games. But I do think that, um, yeah, he's been a little bit shaky in Europe in the Champions League, as is maybe to be expected. But in terms of goals scored within the league, only Cholak, Majowski, Kyogo, Shankland, Abada and Van Veen have more goals than the Rangers right back. It's fair to say that Rangers haven't been very good defensively this season and um, that will be shown within this very 11 here. And so for the first centre back, we are going to go with Cameron Carter Vickers. Not only has he done really, really well for Celtic this year, it was great to see him in the USA squad, getting some minutes in the World Cup, and also his nation, obviously the USA, did make the knockout rounds of the World Cup. Well, they sadly lost against the Netherlands, um, who are obviously a good side, but um, yeah, Cameron Carter Vickers, in my eyes, was the first sort of centre back on the team sheet. Um, I have been umming and ahhing about who his partner is going to be, but I do think that majority of you will probably agree that Cameron Carter Vickers has sort of been the consistent mainstay for the two old firm teams at centre back this season. Yeah, Cameron Carter Vickers has actually played more minutes than any other centre back out of the two old firm teams this year. So that's why he's in there. They're obviously really good defensively and he's played the most minutes. So he's crucial to their defence. So next up, I really was tossing up between a few options, but for me, it has to be green again and it has to be Moritz Jens. The German centre back, in my opinion, has done really, really well since he came in this season for Celtic. He's only 23 years old as well. He's played a lot of minutes himself. I know he's had one or two injuries here or there, um, but yeah, he's still racked up loads of minutes and a good few games as well. So um, I had thought of potentially putting Goldson in um, maybe over the, well, obviously Jens hasn't been at Celtic very long, but I would say over the course of the last couple of years, possibly you'd have Goldson in a combined 11. But I think for what he's done this season, hasn't played consistently enough, maybe, or well enough consistently, rather, should I say. He's probably been held back a little bit by the fact that um, Rangers haven't been as great in general. Gio obviously has left. Michael Beale's come in. He could change that, obviously. Um, I don't think he's had a huge amount of help in his centre-back partner, whoever that may be. Um, obviously, it's changed a lot from Sands to King to Davies. Um, they've had a lot of change, haven't they, Rangers, in defence. Loads of injury issues, um, which is why I'd say Goldson can't really go in this. They haven't defended very well this season, Rangers. So we're going for a Cameron Carter Vickers and a Moritz Jens centre back pairing. On to left back, we are going to go for somebody who, funnily enough, isn't a left back. You can't, I don't think, put Barisic or um, Yilmaz in here. I don't think you can put Rangers players in there. Um, again, I don't think they've been good enough defensively. I really, really want to put in another man who's got very far in the World Cup, further than any other Celtic player, and that is Josip Juranovic. Yeah, he's um, obviously done really, really well and would prefer to be a right back. I understand that. But I think he's good enough to play left back as well. I've seen him play left back, I think, once or twice for Celtic anyway. Um, you could have put Burnaby in there. You could have put Greg Taylor in there, actually, to be fair. But I just think he's probably a little bit of a better player 
player. Again, you would probably have him on his right back, and I might get completely rinsed in the comments for this, but um, yeah, my back four is Tav, Carter, Vickers, Jens, and Juranovic playing at left back. Right, moving on to the midfield. Again, Rangers fans, please don't rinse me too badly in the comments. Um, but again, I think you can all probably agree in some of the quality that Celtic have in their midfield. And I'm going to go first with their captain, Callum McGregor. Callum McGregor is the captain of the top team in the league. He's the man that keeps everything ticking in the centre of midfield. He keeps the energy up. He really, really reminds me of Jordan Henderson for Liverpool. Yes, while he might not be the flashiest centre midfielder of all time, he's the captain. He does everything right on and off the pitch, it seems. And um, yeah, just seems like a guy that you have to have in there if we're talking about a combined XI this season. He's the captain of the top team in the league. So I don't think you can't not I don't think you, yeah, can't not have McGregor in there. Um, but moving on to the other two, I'm going to go for a 4-3-3. Pretty standard these days, isn't it? A 4-3-3. But um, I've been tossing and turning between quite a few of them. But first up with him is his Celtic teammate, Hatate. It's got to be Hatate. The Japanese man's so good. 25 years old. And I think he's got to be in there this season, purely based on that pass against Real Madrid alone. And when I was tossing up between like who to put in there, like you think of Rangers midfielders this season. Again, they've been inconsistent because some of them have had to play centre-back, some of them haven't played at all. Ryan Jack, Len Kamara, they're in and out of the team. Lundstrom, yeah, he, he may be a consistent starter for them, but I don't think he's been good in some of the games that I've seen anyway. Um, there's been a few inconsistent performance for Rangers and obviously Sands has had to play centre-back so can you really put him in there and then I was looking at Celtic and all during like my sort of last few days of thinking about doing this video I was thinking Aaron Moy's got to be in there based on what I've seen in the World Cup but then I've looked he's only played I think 800 minutes for um, Celtic this season so I don't think you can necessarily put him in but the man who has played most minutes for Celtic and I'm looking at it just now in midfield is Matt O'Reilly and not only has he played the most minutes but he is the top assister in the Scottish Premiership this season so O'Reilly is my other centre mid in there so there we go look there we have it so far let me just check the camera is still on there we go we have Hart in goal Tavernier is our only Rangers player so far out of these whole one two three four five seven eight players Kartvik is Jens Juranovic McGregor Hatate O'Reilly do you agree with me so far? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, the World Cup has sort of swayed a few of my decisions here. Like Juranovic and CCV both played in the World Cup and have progressed as well. I also wanted to have Maida and Moy in there, but having looked at some of the other players, like I've explained with Moy, I couldn't get him in there. I don't think you can get Maida in here as well. Um, we are going to start on the right-hand side as we did with the defence for the attack as well. And we are going to go for... Jota. I think that Jota is probably technically the best player in the league. He has five goals to his name this season and he has six assists. So he's second in the assist tally and he's also up there for goals too. But I just think when you watch him, he just does special things. He scores goals from all different angles. He creates things and he just looks like one of them players that, yes, while he's playing in Scotland right now, um, give him a couple more years of playing like this and I'm sure that teams in England are already looking at him He was obviously at Benfica before wasn't he so um, I can see him going on to have a really really amazing career not that he's not had an amazing career already um, But I just think that if he keeps that form up and Celtic keep all the rest of these players playing well then um, Who knows what he can go on to achieve personally in his career? I don't think you need me to tell you much more about that. I think he sort of picks himself there um, next up is the man who has the highest goals per 90 minutes in the SPL this season, in the Premiership, and that is Kyogo. But I'm going to have to put him out on the left wing. I know he'd rather be up front, and I know, actually, just looking at it now, I've changed from capitals to uh, lowercase for Kyogo. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to have him out on the left wing because of who we're going to have up front. Kyogo is third in the goal-scoring ranks this season, only behind Majowski and Cholak, who both have 11 each. Kyogo has 10. Kyogo is an unreal player, and again, much like with Jota, you probably don't need me to tell you too much about him. Um, I'm really, really surprised, though, that he wasn't in the Japan squad, um, given that... Oh, I'm going to make him capitals, why not? Um, yeah, I, I don't know why he wasn't in the Japan squad. When you see, I suppose, Japan actually playing the way they did, um, they were setting up really defensively, weren't they, in, in their games? Um, I know they're out now, sadly, from that penalty shootout, but... Um, maybe Kyogo 
defensively wasn't going to do the job that Maeda would have done up front. Um, but still, to have him on the bench, maybe he could have scored a penalty the other day in that shootout. So um, I think they missed out in not having him there, and I'm sure he was gutted not to be there personally, especially when he's like the star of that Celtic team, him and Jota, yet Maeda went. Um, very, very strange decision for me. Um, but yeah, there we go, Kyogo and Jota. And Rangers fans, we are going to end with a Rangers player, and it has to be that man. Antonio Cholak. Despite Rangers actually not playing very well this season, Cholak is still scoring goals for fun, isn't he? He is joint Premiership top scorer. Um, and we can say he is the top scorer because he's got 11 and 14 and Mayovsky's got 11 and 15, the Aberdeen man. Um, so yeah, Cholak has a goal every uh, 90, or he has 0.94 goals every 90 minutes, whereas Mayovsky has 0.8 goals every 90 minutes. Um, Cholak doesn't have a better per 90 goals than Kyogo. 1.14 every 90 for Kyogo, um, who's played less games. But yeah, Cholak, an unreal player. And like I say, even when Rangers haven't been playing so well, he's still scoring loads of goals. So here's my little whiteboard. I hope you can see it okay. Uh, I'm going to have to edit this video and see sort of how it looks. But we've got Hart in goal. Tavernier right back, Kartovic as centre back, Moritz Jens and Juranovic making up the defence. A midfield trio of Celtic players, McGregor, Hetate and O'Reilly with Jota, Kyogo and Cholak there. Um, I had thought of, yeah, like I say, other players, Abadam, Maida, and in terms of the Rangers squad, I've got that up in front of me as well. Midfielders, like I say, Kamara, Lundstrom's played the most minutes for their midfield. Tillman, actually, I haven't mentioned him yet in this video. I was thinking Tillman, but again, maybe been a little bit inconsistent had i've done this video what like 18 months ago i would have felt absolutely mental for not putting in morelos or kent such good players on their day but this season you they just haven't done it i don't think anyone can really make a case for them going in the team for this season um again just looking through matondo's not really made an impact sakala has been in and out of the team um, and i think a lot of this does stem from the previous management maybe and the fact that um they were so inconsistent with who they're playing and chopping and changing the squad. And I don't think the injury crisis has really helped Rangers at centre-back. And that's meant that a lot of midfielders have had to play centre-back. So it's all kind of changed a little bit for Rangers. But Celtic have been consistent. They've had less injuries. They're top of the league and just done fantastically well over the last couple of years. So this is my 11. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Um, obviously, this is just a little bit of fun. So please don't take it too seriously. Please hit that like button. Please do subscribe if you're new. I'll leave some videos on screen if you could click on to carry on watching that would be amazing cheers and i'll see you in the next one